Hey, welcome to Smarter Tech. My name is Nick, the EMF guy, you know, I'm the author of this book, The Non Tinfoil Guide to EMFs. Today's going to be very different. This episode is a short 10 minute presentation and I'm timing it. So I'll have eight to nine minutes to tell you why cell phones are not safe and why radio frequency radiation that most people think is perfectly safe is not and why you should create distance between your face and your phone. So this presentation is for you if you're a skeptic and you're really wondering what the heck I'm talking about or if you have skeptics in your family, friends, colleagues, uh, there are different circles in your life and you want to share this information with them so they can uh, make up their own mind. So first, let's establish something. What is true now, scientifically speaking or, so speaking, or in health policies, will not necessarily stay true for a very long time. Things evolve, right? So let's take a few examples where things did not evolve fast enough and people suffered. So here's the example with asbestos I had in my book. Early warning signs that maybe asbestos is a problem for your lungs and might lead to complications including cancer was 1906. 99 years later, the European Union banned asbestos finally. It's still killing 10,000 people in the US alone every single year. I have a few more examples, it will get a little bit dry here, but trans fats, for example, 1957, we kind of some scientists sounded the alarm saying maybe this stuff causes extra heart attacks is bad for your your heart health for your lipid profile and 61 years later finally was banned in the US it's causing at the moment uh, extra uh, let's say an estimation of 42,000 deaths from cardiovascular disease alone and extrapolated this will probably kill 2.5 million people in the next 60 years. So that's bad. So that's an example where when we think there's an issue with an agent, uh, which uh, could be uh, something in your food like trans fats, something in the air like air pollution, or just a bad habit that people have, like using a cell phone next to their face, you can use the precautionary principle and do better and save lives. Remember also that not such a long time ago, you had ads like this. Nationwide survey shows that more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarettes. And your T-zone will tell you, T for taste, T for tr I don't understand any of this, but it's very weird when you look at it with the 2021 lens, for sure. What happened in the 19... Uh, at the end of the 1990s is that the FDA, Food and Drug Administration in the U.S., asked, well, uh, do, do cell phones pose a health hazard? Uh, at the moment, they still argue on their website that the weight of scientific evidence has not linked this type of radiation, which is radio frequency energy from cell phone with any health problems. Here's the problem. The NTP study, National Toxicology Program, which uh, basically uh, delivered their final results in 2018, showed the exact opposite. The FDA mandated the NTP to study this stuff. They wanted to know in rats and mice, does cell phone radiation and let's say the, equi the human uh, equivalent of talking 30 minutes per day for 36 years, uh, does it cause extra tumors? And they said, well, couldn't get clearer than that. Clear evidence of cancer. So that's pretty much the story here. Also, if you look at the available studies at the moment, uh, this cell phone you're using, you might be using like an iPhone or others, is a class 2B carcinogen. It emits a type of radiation that is considered a possible carcinogen. However, the top scientists studying the epidemiology, which means the, the possible link between cancer, brain tumors in particular, and cell phone use, say, well, that decision to the 2011 IARC decision, which was a 2B carcinogen, uh, if we look at the new data that came out in the last 10 years alone, it should be a group one carcinogen. If it were to be reclassified as a group one carcinogen, it would be in the same category as these guys, the cigarettes, or these guys, the asbestos. 
So something to think about. And at the moment, the trend is that the, si the more the science comes out, the clearer it becomes that this stuff is a carcinogen. Here you have Investigate Europe, a group of top investigative journalists um, who are who have top credentials, uh, talked about 5G. And I'm not talking about uh, in, in a way that we're people call them conspiracy theories or speculations or any crazy links, anything like that. Uh, I hate these words anyway, but the story is that a very relatively mainstream group of investigative journalists look at a question of 5G and they said, you know what, the biggest problem is that we don't know what this stuff will do to us. But what we do know is that there's industry funding and that it it will influence the outcomes of study. In other words, the more uh, funded by industry certain studies are, the more likely they are to show that there's no link between cell phones and ill health effects. So we have cancer as a reason why you shouldn't use your phone right next to your face. And we have other health reasons, including fertility. For example, that's a document from the Cleveland Clinic, a very prestigious um, medical institution in the US, summer 2010, and they say, keep your cell phone out of your pants pockets. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see it. And they say, well, why is it the radio frequency electromagnetic waves emitted by cell phones may increase oxidative stress and decrease sperm motility, contributing to decreased fertility. So if you're a man, decreased fertility, women, there's also indications it might be the case. So just to err on the, on the safe side, why not not do that? Since uh, at the moment, it's clear that there might be problem around this type of radiation and that in the future, we might regret these choices if we don't take action now. So the idea is this, the evidence is already here that there's something could be a carcinogen, probably is a carcinogen, especially if you use a phone right next to your face day in, day out. Very bad idea. You should create distance between your phone and any body part. So in your pocket, it's not good enough. Uh, yes, it's not close to your face, but now it's close to your groin area. So if you care about your fertility, your hormone production, normal health, you should probably err on the safe side and create distance between, the, between these machines and your body. Also, consider that these devices are tested for a maximum of 30 minutes and most users use them for hours and hours every day. So overall, if you want to reduce your exposure to these devices by preferring wired solutions, such as an Ethernet cable for your computer, that's also highly recommended. And I did not have a timer, so, <laughs> so hopefully this presentation is short enough, but the evidence is there and I'm gonna link uh, everything I talked about, IR decisions, the science studies, and you can look it up for yourself. The message is not to become dogmatic and to hide in the cave, never use technology again. And that was, I think, the, the, the gist of the message I've been trying to share for the last four to five years in my professional work as an advocate for safe technologies. But it is to adopt the precautionary principle and minimize your use of these devices and minimize how much you rely on wireless. There are countless solutions. Most of them require just a slight change of habits or new gadgets that are wired. And then you can continue going on the internet, doing your thing and having fun because I think the internet and our telecommunications also have brought a lot of uh, great things to human society. However, there might be downsides. So if you ignore those downsides, I think it's just akin uh, to putting your head in the sand at the moment, uh, just like it happened with asbestos and cigarettes and DDT and so many other agents. So let's, let's not uh, forget history and right now, start being uh, a ring on the safer side. So I hope you liked this presentation. If you did, share it widely and um, see you next time. Bye-bye.